Welcome class, Professor Steve here with our first lecture capture on um, our ocean circulation part two unit. Um, and we're going to just briefly go over what the Coriolis effect is. So um, I wrote uh, really briefly in the intro to this unit that in order to understand the remainder of the ocean circulation patterns, uh, primarily uh, which take place in the surface ocean, uh, you have to understand atmospheric circulation and both ocean circulation and atmospheric circulation and many other things that we that we do or depend on on earth are affected by the Coriolis effect and so um, we need to have a brief understanding of that. Um, in order to understand the Coriolis effect you need to kind of have an intuitive feel for it. Um, one of the most intuitive sort of analogies there is is centripetal versus centrifugal force. Um, and this, these are the forces you feel when something is spinning around. When something has a circular motion, there's a force applied on both the center of that thing's gravity um, and, uh, and, and the interaction that that object has with whatever's causing the spinning motion. Um, so, for instance, we have this example of a man spinning a whoops, sorry, have a man spinning a shot put around. Um, centripetal force with a P uh, it stands for center seeking. So the centripetal force is the force felt by that ball. So the ball is attached to a, a line which the man is holding. So as the man spins around in a circle with this shot put ball, the force that that ball is actually feeling is towards the man. Right? There's a force towards the man that is um, caused by the attachment of that rope to the man and the ball. Right? The ball wants to go that way, but it doesn't because of the force um, seeking the center of that rotational um, mo movement, and that's the centripetal force. The centrifugal force, or the, the FUG, right, is center fleeing. So the centrifugal force is felt by the man's arm, right? The man's arm um, is applying force to the ball so that it won't, um, is holding onto the rope attached to the ball so it won't fly away. And so the force of, of holding on to that is felt um, in actuality as a force tugging on that man's on that m man's arm. So it's the force fleeing the center of rotation, and the center of rotation is the man's body. Right? He sort of spins in place, and everything out here will spin in a big circle. So that's the center of rotation. So his arm feels the center fleeing force. Right? The force fleeing away from the center. The ball feels a force uh, seeking or toward the center. Okay, and this is a pretty intuitive thing for most of us. Anybody who's ever grabbed their, their little brother, sister, nephew, whatever, or spun a ball around, or even themselves around, you can feel those forces. Another thing to understand is um, the center of force versus the center of gravity. <clears throat> so let's take uh, this depiction of, our, of the Earth, of, of any planet, or of anything large enough to have a gravitational pull. The center of gravity of an object is at the very center of the object. So the very center, the core of the Earth, is where the center of gravity is for all of us. For um, that is that is the, the 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 pulling force, the centripetal force that we feel that keeps us on Earth and stops us from floating away is towards the very center of the Earth. Okay, the uh, center uh, center of gravity. The center of force is anywhere along the axis of the spinning, of the movement of rotation, right? So if this is the Earth from, here's the North Pole, here's the South Pole, and the Earth is spinning around this way, right? The axis of rotation is straight up and down here. So even though the axis, uh, the center of gravity is at the very center of the Earth, so you could draw this line from anywhere in the Earth to any point outside the perimeter of the Earth, but if you're standing at this latitude here, your center of gravity is here, but your center of rotation is here. So this will become more important. And the, and, and the acceleration you feel in this direction from the spinning of the Earth um, is called centrifugal acceleration. Um, and you don't need to know this equation, but we'll come back to it again when we need to um, describe the differences in force felt uh, caused by Coriolis. But Coriolis really, um, the Coriolis effect really is just a consequence of circular motion. So what is the consequence of circular motion? So it's any object moving freely across a plane of reference that's in circular motion. And so what the consequence is, is an apparent 
deflection. Okay, an apparent curved path, not a true curved path. And this little um, video displays that quite nicely. If you have some sort of gun or launcher here, or it's just your arm, and you throw a ball in a straight direction, and the plane you're standing on is rotating, say, say like the Earth, and you're firing this thing over a long distance, or if this is a merry-go-round and you're trying to roll a ball in, in one direction, the ball or the gun or what have you is actually traveling in a straight line in the direction of which, you, of which your force caused it to go. But because the plane of reference that you're standing on is rotating, right, with reference to, say, this point, on that plane of reference. So if I'm here and I throw a ball to you here, here, you've already moved to here by the time the ball gets there. And so it appears to curve to the right. The ball appears to curve to 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 the this person's right, but when if you're here and the ball's coming towards you, it appears to turn towards the left. So that's the consequence of of moving objects um on a plane of circular motion and that's an apparent deflection of the path. And we could see that again in this little video. Right? The ball is being shot in a straight line. But because this hoop has been placed at the perfect angle behind the path of circular motion, I think it'll play again. Yep. The hoop is able to catch it. And this is a very similar thing. So the hoop has to be placed behind the path, and so you have to anticipate where it's going to end up. Um, and if you know the speed and deflection of that, then you can anticipate that. And this is a good demonstration of what um, what people have to do if they're firing things or launching things or flying things over long distances. The, the, um, the navigator on your plane, when you take a flight, has to anticipate the circular motion of the Earth, and if it doesn't, you will end up in the wrong place, um, a destination different than you had planned. So the 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 the, um, <clears throat> the consequence is an apparent deflected path, um, and there are three main rules that fall into to um, to these consequences. And these are the th the three things that I really want you to remember: three rules for the tendency of a deflected path. So the apparent deflected path of an object, freely moving object, um, on a on a rotational frame of reference. Right. The deflected path is always to the right in the northern hemisphere on Earth and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Right, so if we go back to here, if here we're in the northern hemisphere and the Earth is rotating this way, right, um, then the path, the ball de appears to be deflecting right. If we were standing on the other side of the Earth, then the Earth would appear to be rotating the other way and the ball would be deflected to the other way. Okay, second faster movement equals greater deflection. So the faster that object moves, the faster it appears to deflect to the right. So if that ball being fired on either of those little videos um, was moving faster, then the deflection would appear to be faster. Okay. The other thing to remember, the third rule that I want you to remember, is that the effect is highest at the poles and decreases to zero at the equator. Now, if I go backwards to this video again, right? So if I'm, if we're standing here at the edge and firing this way, because this rotation is steady, we have a slow, steady deflect, apparent deflection of the path, right? If you took this gun and put it right here, right, this point in the circle appears to turn faster than this point in the circle. So if I fired from here, it would have a much stronger deflection or I should say a stronger apparent deflection. Okay, we'll see these things much more clearly in the video you're going to watch on the main on the main page. Um, and you'll get a good description in the book as well. Thanks for joining me. See you next lesson.